Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Points of Articulation. My name is David. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Today, I'm looking at the Hot Wheels Star Wars concept series Land Speeder. Now, this particular Land Speeder was first seen as a concept model by Colin Cantwell. And I have to say, this is another interesting looking vessel. Now, for the size of this diecast model, we're looking at just under 3 inches long. So, we all know the drill by now. We're going to take a look at the mold, the paint. Put on a stand, compare it to some other ships, and then we'll be done. So let's get moving. Alright, let's get this review started by looking at the mold. Like in all my reviews, I will go over all the major sections of the vehicle. And then we'll get a nice close-up look to see all those fine details. Now, because this is a concept ship, there's not much detail about it at all. There's no diagrams or a book with all data. So I'm just going to label what I know, and then we'll move on from there. But I have to admit, a very interesting design, like a horseshoe. We have some arches, mechanism in the center, could be the engine, because it is very flat. Then we have fins on the back, looking good. Details around the sides. Cockpit with a transparent windshield. Console with steering wheel. And a pilot, which uh, sort of looks like the original Star Killer from the Star Wars. It was a comic that was made to basically tell the story of George Lucas's original Star Wars idea. If you haven't seen that, check it out. It's pretty neat. On the bottom of the vessel, three metal rivets, four plastic ones, two screws, peg port for the stand, copyright crap. But as you can see, it is very flat. Really nothing to write home about. With some nice details nonetheless. So now, let's get a closer look. Beginning our closer look, we'll start at the bottom of the ship. We have our plastic rivet. Minor gap here between the plastic and metal. And there is a lip down here. It's basically the only detail down here. Not much, but it's okay. Moving up, another plastic rivet. Then it raises up here to go to the front of the ship in the cockpit. But we have three rivets holding it together. Copyright crap. Little ID tag there. Plastic rivet. And plastic rivet. And if you're wondering... There's no detail going on the sides of the vessel or the inner circle here. It's all flat and smooth. Now for the center, two screws holding it together, peg port for the stand. And then it goes into this module here, which we'll look at that real quick. Very basic, but it gets the job done. A couple modules on here as well. Looking good. My guess is that this is the engine section, but, you know, this is a concept ship, so I can be wrong. Now, to attach this module to the actual vessel, there is arches that connect it. And they're pretty cool. Very basic as well. There's no designs on them, per se. As you can see, both sides are the same. Not really anything to write home about. But I do like the idea of them holding it together. That's pretty cool. Now for the ship itself, we do have fins, which, uh, you know, they're just fins. There's nothing really special about them. And they're good. They're on both sides painted. Pretty sick. And here's the other side. Pretty dope. And the rest of the ship is basically flat, as you can see. There's nothing really to talk about until we get to the edge here, which looks pretty good. We do have some mold in here. Little lines. Nice. Now moving up to the front of the ship again, we have our cockpit section. In the front, raised areas. Looks like a jack-o'-lantern with two eyes and a nose. And we have a gap here, which seems to be the mold not being closed all the way. But it just looks like a face of a robot now. But not too bad. On the sides, we have these raised sections that are painted black. Pretty cool. On the back, there's nothing there until we get here. We have a little lip. Transparent plastic windshield. Pretty interesting. We have a console, which is blank, except it does have a steering wheel. And then the figure, which I want to talk about. So let's take a closer look at that. 
Now this is as close as I could get to it without my camera messing up. But the bottom is very flat. And then we have the pants with some wrinkles there. Looking good. The chest, some nice designs on there. Very vague, but the interesting thing is on the back, there is a tank there for oxygen or something. So that's pretty awesome. Then we have the arms and gloves. Nicely molded. And the hands are curved to fit the steering wheel. So I'm digging that. Nice attention to detail. Now for the face, we have goggles, a little strap, yellow helmet. And then we have right here a nice face. And we can see a nose and two little recesses for where eyes should be. They didn't have to do all this, but it's nice they did. And you can see where the lenses would be for the goggles as well. Pretty cool. You know, this might actually be hair as well. Like, it could very well be the Star Killer from the Star Wars comics. So, I don't know. Pretty interesting stuff. And that's everything for the mold. I hope I covered everything. You know, on the surface, it seems very plain Jane. But when we got close, there is some nice detail elements on here, especially the pilot. Pretty neat. So, now let's take a look at the paint. And now looking at that paint to the concept series Lance Peter, we're looking at around seven different colors, believe it or not. First one up is a nice orange, looking good. On the bottom, they tried to match the die cast to the plastic. Doesn't really go, but nice attempt. Next, we have black. On the fins on both sides, looking good. On the sides of the ship, sides of the cockpit. And in the front, we have three different sections. Looking good. Nothing on the back. Now, here's where all the color comes in with the pilot. So let's get a close-up of that. And here we have the close-up of the pilot. On the ground here, underneath the seat, we have a nice dark gray. Then we have tan, gray, brown, a skin tone, and yellow. All in all, very nice. I think that came out great. They didn't even need to put a person in there, but it's kind of neat they did. And that does it for the paint. I know at first glance, it doesn't seem like it has much of anything. But as we saw, it does, and it's quite good. So now, let's put this baby on the stand, compare it to some other vessels, and then we'll be done. And just like other Hot Wheels Star Wars ships, it comes with a stand. This one says Star Wars, peg it in the port, hear that click. And just like that, you're good to go. And now for a quick size comparison with the concept series land speeder seen in the center, starting on the far left, we have the TIE Fighter, X-Wing, Millennium Falcon, and a Star Destroyer. And don't forget, if you want to see a review of any of these ships, check the description below. And for an added bonus size comparison with the concept land speeder seen on the right hand side, on the left is the version that made it into the final film. And that one is also done by Hot Wheels. And even though they're completely different designs, you know, they do go well together in the collection. And I like having them next to each other. I think they look good. We have what is and what could have been. And that does it today for my review of the Hot Wheels Star Wars Concept Series Land Speeder. Now, out of all of them that were released, this one might be my least favorite. You know, after looking at it, it has grown on. Even though it does look very plain, as we saw when we were zoomed in, it has some great design elements, like those arches, the fins, and it does have some details when we look close, just not many. Where this model excels in, for a kid's toy, the model is very accurate to the real concept model. Besides that, I really like the figurine that's painted and molded in there. It's really nice. Speaking of the paint, the paint is very accurate to the model as well. So well done, Hot Wheels. And plus, you can't forget, it does come with that translucent stand. So that way it blends in with the rest of the collection. And I'm a huge fan of that. So all in all, I'm just going to end the video by saying I fully recommend this. It may not be my favorite, but if you're a fan of Star Wars and Star Wars history and filmmaking, this is for you. So that's everything I have to say about this interesting ship today. I hope you enjoyed my review. If you did, hit that like button. And if you'd like to see new reviews every Thursday, subscribe. Again, thank you very much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I hope to see you next time. Bye, everybody.